Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. Please join in singing our opening antiphon, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we continue to celebrate this Easter season, we do so on this Divine Mercy Sunday, where we recognize God's infinite mercy for all of us, His love and the grace that flows from His throne, and the gift that He gives us through His Son that he will not leave us abandoned, but rather continue to help us in any way possible to grow in our relationship with him through his Son and the power of that Holy Spirit. But for the times that we have turned away from his mercy, for the times that we have turned away from his love, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the Father's right hand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Take away the 
sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on all. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, whom in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's needs. Every day they devoted themselves to the meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. (laughs) 
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord, but he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we come to celebrate this Divine Mercy Sunday and to continue our Easter celebration, particularly on this last day of the octave of Easter, we do so with this joy that is present to us because of the risen Lord. And that joy is in spite of many other things that are happening within our world. So many times I've been speaking with people six feet apart and now with masks on, but we're st I'm still, I still cannot not talk to somebody. It's just in my DNA. Anyway, so within me talking with people, they are like, you know, against the wall, like, you know, na nails trying to get out of doors. They just, they, we want to connect. We want to talk with people. We want to share things with people. We want to celebrate Easter. We want to eat ham and eat kielbasa and, you know, and do all the other things that we are called to do and do all these things with great joy. And we cannot wait with this anticipation almost. And then there's another part where it's filled with fear, where if you say hi to somebody, they're like, thrown back that somebody actually spoke to them and then they skitter away. Um, I was over in Wegmans and as I was over in Wegmans I was shopping around and getting some things together for the rectory and there was uh, a guy who had this cart and it was filled, absolutely filled. And he went over and he went to pick up uh, two things of cat litter and as he picked them up he gave this groan because he looked at the cart and I know what was going on in his head. He had no idea how he was going to fit in there and I just started laughing and I said, yeah, that's going to break. And he started rolling. And he said, you are the first person to talk to me. And I'm like, I know. What's going on with this? And he goes, I don't know. And then we have this big conversation. So every time we passed each other in the aisle, we laughed because everybody else would like scatter and we would have the entire aisle to ourselves. And we would just stand there and look around and talk and all this sort of stuff. It was awesome. That's sometimes what's happening now. People are wanting to share good news, and it's almost like it's bursting inside of them. And then there are those who are very much afraid, afraid of whatever might happen, afraid of whatever might be. And talking to older people particularly, one of the things that they'll tell me is they're not afraid, especially those who have faith. They're not afraid because they know that they have been preparing their entire lives to do one thing. That's to meet the Lord. And they're not pushing it. They're not rushing out the door by any stretch of the imagination. 
but they realize that they cannot live life in fear, but they need to live life in hope. Hope of a Savior that came not to condemn us, but to bring us salvation, to redeem us, to show us his love and his mercy, and to allow himself to be bruised and to be broken and to be pierced for our offenses and crushed for our sins. But there's more than just what this world offers because he is risen from the dead. So they approach life as faithful members who are not afraid, but who go out and to proclaim the good news. Do so with caution because they realize that they are at risk, but still proclaiming the good news and sharing that gift of love. You see, my brothers and sisters, we hear from the letter of St. James that perfect love drives out fear. When I love someone, I'm never afraid because I trust in them. And I also will do what I can in order to share love with them because that love is received in so many beautiful ways. Look at Thomas. The first thing that Jesus does to his disciples is he says, do not be afraid, or in today's gospel, peace be with you. Not to be filled with anxiety or, or concern, but to be filled with peace. And then after he told them about his peace, he did something remarkable. He showed them his hands and his side. He showed them the pierced, broken body that he retained after the resurrection. In other words, look at what I went through, and here I stand before you. Now, I have a mission for you, to go into the world and to proclaim this good news, that the grave has not overcome me, and to go and proclaim this gift that sins can be forgiven in my name, that we don't have to worry or be concerned, but to recognize our sinfulness and recognize God's mercy. Now, Thomas was not with them, and he was also afraid. Why Thomas wasn't with him, I, I don't know. You know, uh, it could be all the reasons why, you know, people used to make up when they couldn't come to church on Sundays. You know, I, I'm too busy doing this or I'm too busy doing that. We heard in the first reading that they did all of these things and shared community together and they listened um, within the Acts of the Apostles and uh, came to uh, do works of great charity. Um, so no matter what, the Christian church was always together. But there's always ways of making excuses why I can't be there. And so Thomas wasn't there for whatever excuse that he had. But ultimately, it was because of the pain, the pain of the cross. Why should I go? Why, why should I g gather with you guys anymore? The Christ who I thought was going to be there wasn't. So all of my fears came true. When I asked him about Lazarus and how he was going to show God's miracle, yes, he rose, raised from the dead. But I felt like, you know what, we should go die with him anyways. Or when he was talking to us at the Last Supper and he was telling us all about the glory of God and how he was going out, and I was honest with him and I said, Lord, I have no idea where you are going. How can we know the way? And then he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And he asks us if we believe, and we all nodded our heads, but then we all ran away for the, for the uh, crucifixion anyways. So now you expect me to believe that he's risen from the dead. Well, listen, if he shows up and I could put my finger into his hands and put my hand into his side, then maybe I'll start believing something. But right now, he's really let me down. How many times do we sometimes hear that or maybe for those who are viewing this beautiful Mass, feel that. When we think about Jesus, and we think about those moments in our lives when it was painful, or when it was troublesome, or when we wondered what the Word of God meant, or when I needed to be absolved of my sins and I just didn't feel it. What was that like? Did I just give up? Did all of a sudden I stop showing up, faded away, 
And then before you knew it, two weeks turned into two years, turned into 20 years since I stepped foot in a church. But you know what the wonderful thing is? Even though we may sometimes give up on God, God never gives up on us. He appeared to Thomas. And when he appeared to Thomas, he didn't chastise him. He didn't say, discount his fear or his intrepidation or even his anger. He said, come here. Put your hand in my side. Use your fingers and probe the nail marks in my hands. Do not be unbelieving. Believe. Trust me. I know the pain. I was there. I know the heartache. I went through it. When you were suffering, I was suffering. Because you're part of my family. You're part of the body of Christ. St. Paul would hear about this example and take it a little one step further when he would say that when one part suffers, we all suffer. But when all, one part rejoices, we all rejoice. That's the beauty of God's love. And he fell before him and said, my Lord and my God. And that's when Jesus gave us a great opportunity. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. Sometimes we might be still in that stage where we're looking for God. And we want to share that good news. Or we just want him to be there. We just don't know where or how. We're not supposed to be unbelieving. But to hold faith to a promise. A promise that was given thousands of years ago. And a promise that remains today. Every time we celebrate the Holy Mass. Every time we receive him in the Blessed Sacrament every time our sins are forgiven in the sacrament of reconciliation. You see, the end of St. John's Gospel is powerful because he states, these were written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. My brothers and sisters, there are many other signs. They're not written in the good book, but that are lived in the saints and in our lives and in so many other people's life. That's the good news, that we're not meant for this world and we're not supposed to be afraid of this world, but filled with a love and a joy that this world cannot take from us. So persevere in faith, wear your masks, do all the things that we're asked to do in order to end the coronavirus. I don't mean to mitigate the severity of it all. But I'll be honest with you. Knowing as you may know me, I cannot wait until we can gather together in backyards, over fires, sharing beverages, adult or otherwise, and just sharing the good news that this too has passed that the glory of God is revealed and hope was always there. We just needed to focus on it maybe a little bit more. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's divine providence and his mercy, we recognize our needs. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, and all who lead God's holy church, that we may be stalwart in our faith and confident in our proclamation of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders of our nation, of our communities, that we may continue to grow in strength of unity and peace and not allow whatever evils in this world divide us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those affected by the coronavirus, for its stop, stopping being spread, for its healing within others, and for those who have succumbed to the virus that they may rest in the arms of God, confident in a promise given to them by the Lord. We pray for all those who fight the virus, our doctors, nurses, firefighters, police, first responders, our military personnel who are in harm's way, and for all those in our personal care homes, our nursing homes and our hospitals, for those clerks who serve our needs and our civil servants that still deliver packages and still watch over our cities and our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an increase of courage to answer the call to priesthood and religious life, fidelity within married life and chastity within all walks of life, that love may truly be lived and life may be given fully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died. That the promise given to them in their baptism may be fulfilled in the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, you have called us together as a family of faith, the body of Christ. Help us to truly rejoice in your son's resurrection so that we may have confidence in the faith that we have been given and that faith may grow ever more deeply within our hearts, though tried and tested. It may be always true. For we recognize this faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. As our altar is being prepared, let us sing our offertory hymn at the Lamb's High Feast. washed us in the 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise of glorious name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those who you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attend unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, and minus we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for the, for the kingdom, kingdom the, power, the power, and the glory, and the glory are yours, yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we come to receive Christ in a spiritual communion, let us sing our communion antithon, O sons and daughters.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements. Uh, as we continue to come to understand whatever this is that we're going through, uh, please be careful, as always. Uh, we've been blessed in very many ways. Uh, and for the, those who are back in the east part of our region and those who are around the, our country who are now viewing us on YouTube, uh, thank you for being with us, but please know that our prayers are with you. Um, our numbers are nowhere near the numbers that we're seeing back there, and uh, we're truly blessed, but we're also concerned. Um, so again, if there's a need that you know of or if there's somebody that you know of that is in need, don't be afraid to go and share the good news with them. Don't be afraid to share your faith and to allow that faith to be given um, in powerful ways. As we continue to celebrate the gift of God's love, we do so in the coming novena of St. Joseph. Uh, we'll be beginning uh, this week, and information concerning that is online uh, with our bulletins, but we're also being presenting an online um, novena movement that will be taking place uh, at the beginning of the novena until next Thursday. Uh, so we'll be trying to get that up on a daily basis, just talking about St. Joseph and we're just praying together for a short period of time um, every day for that uh, nine-day novena. So again, uh, please keep an eye on YouTube and on Facebook for those um, many things that are happening. And then also, as May draws near, we are hoping and praying uh, that Mary will shine forth her divine motherly light upon us and intercede for us to her son to just kind of let loose and let us, you know, truly celebrate uh, spring without snow. That would be awesome. Anyway, so a uh, great opportunity for us to, again, praise God in many beautiful ways coming up in May. So again, uh, please keep track of us and please know that you are so much in our prayers. And so before we come to the conclusion of this beautiful Mass, let us pray uh, to our Mother Mary and to St. Joseph, our protector and guide, for their intercession to the throne of God and to the throne of their Son, that they may come to be with us and to pray for us, that the Son and the Father may send the grace to end the coronavirus and its spread and heal those who are afflic afflicted and to comfort those who have passed and their families and friends. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Good Saint Joseph, pray for us. Realizing that we are not only in a temporal battle, but also in a spiritual battle, we turn to all the holy angels and saints, and we ask for their protection, their intercession, their guidance, and their defense particularly for our doctors, our nurses, our firefighters, police, and first responders, all those who are serving us in our clerks and in our civil servants, all those who are delivering for us, all our military personnel who are always in harm's way protecting our freedom, and for all those who are serving, those who are in nursing homes, hospitals, and personal care homes, that God may protect them and watch over them always, we pray. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. All our holy guardian angels, pray, pray for us. us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. As we come to the end of this holy mass, let us sing our closing hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Who?